Welcome everyone. My name is Patricia Kravchuk and I am a second year PhD student at the University of Southern California. Today I will present our work in the area of anomaly detection and classification in scientific workflows. This work was funded by the Department of Energy. During this short talk, you will hear from me and my colleague, George Papadimitriou, who is also a PhD student at USC. I will start by motivating the project, then George will present the high level overview of our approach and discuss the process of data creation. Then I will introduce the machine learning methodology we employed, discuss the current results and share our plans for future work. Modern scientific experiments like population level cancer surveillance studies are conducted on complex large-scale distributed high-performance infrastructures like DOE leadership computing facilities. Even though these systems are designed with reliability in mind, they can experience anomalies ranging from subtle, like network performance degradation, to critical, like file system integrity errors. The anomalies affect the performance of the applications that leverage the the system resources and increase the, chance, the chances of the failures. Inspired by recent progress in computer vision, we suggest a novel approach to tackle the problem of anomaly detection and classification by applying the convolutional neural network model to high resolution visualization that captured end-to-end -end workflow executions. I will not give it to George. Hello from me as well. This slide presents our approach at a high level. Uh, workflow executions produce traces, which we collect using our Panorama 360 data capturing tools in real time. We then preprocess this data and visualize them into high resolution constructs. Finally, we use convolutional neural networks to detect and classify anomalies with the intention to narrow down the anomaly sources and ease troubleshooting. To generate workflow place traces uh, for this study, we executed a version of the Pegasus 1000 genome workflow on HD Condor pool deployed on the Exogeny testbed. This deployment had seven nodes in total, a submit node, a data node, and five worker nodes. This Pegasus workflow processes data from the 1000 genome project, and the version of the workflow we executed had 52 compute tasks and transferred over 22 gigabytes of data. During our runs, we introduced synthetic anomalies that, were, that we um, introduced to affect the compute and network resources. To produce the final data set, we had to collect and pre-process the generated workflow traces. For the data collection, we used the online monitoring capabilities offered by the Pegasus's Panorama 360 brands, and we labeled the various traces based on the injected anomalies, if any. We then pre-processed the workflow traces available in logs and within an Elasticsearch instance to create a representation for the Gantt charts in CSV format. Finally, we transform these CSV files into high resolution Gantt charts. These high resolution Gantt charts show the execution timeline of a workflow. Uh, as seen in this slide, uh, these Gantt charts incorporate various workflow manager and queue delays, as well as transfer delays and time span on computation. Our final data set contains 1,000 workflow traces and four main classes normal, hard disk, CPU, and network loss. Each of the individual classes contain 250 traces, and for the classes describing anomalies, there are further subcategories based on, its, on their magnitude. Now, Patricia will continue on machine learning part of the study. So having generated this high resolution visualization of the Gantt charts, we aim on leveraging the advances in computer vision. We employed convolutional neural networks that automatically extract relevant hierarchical features from image data. The network consists of sequence of layers like convolutions, pooling, and normalization layers with non-linear units between them. The layers in the sequence learn progressively abstract representations of the input data. The lower level layers identify simple aspects of the training data like edges, curves, corners, while the upper layers of the model combine these features and create a complex and objective specific representations. Because our data set is quite small, only 1,000 images, we also leverage transfer learning. 
Transfer learning is a design methodology that transfers knowledge of a model trained on a large scale, well annotated data set in one domain to a target domain where label data is scarce. Here we introduce the convolutional neural network architectures used in this project. Uh, we use AlexNet that was developed by Alex Krzyzewski in 2012. This is the model that started the revolution in computer vision. We also looked at VGG16, introduced in 2014 by an Oxford lab. It makes the improvements over AlexNet by replacing large kernel-sized filters with multiple 3x3 three three kernel-sized filters placed one after another. ResNet is our last network. It was introduced in 2015 by a research group at Microsoft. The design of this architecture aims to tackle the issue of vanishing gradient. Vanishing gradient effectively prevents the weight of a model from changing. This leads the network to stop training as the same values are propagated over and over and no useful work is done. Residual neural network solves this issue by utilizing skip connections or shortcuts that jump over and pass the data over a number of layers. This prevents the vanishing gradient issue. In our work, we employ best practices for training machine learning models. We keep a consistent data split across all of the experiments. Our training set contains 80% of data, while validation and test set each contains 10% of data. We use Optuna to find best hyperparameters for our models and, ex and, ex and perform extensive evaluation of our architectures. We also utilize data augmentation techniques like horizontal flips and jitter to increase the robustness of our models and prevent overfitting. In our first approach, we designed a simple convolutional neural network architecture and train it from scratch. Our network consists of a sequence of five convolutional layers with leaky rectified linear unit activations and 2D batch normalization layers between them. We observed that adding data augmentation techniques like horizontal flips and jitter lowers the, per lowers the performance of the model. As shown in figure, the validation error continues to decrease with the training error until epoch 8 for training without data augmentation and epoch 7 for experiments with data augmentation. The loss curves for experiments with data augmentation is slightly smoother, but it ultimately leads to a lower performance. This behavior could be attributed to small interclass differences and highly specific structure of our GAN chart dataset. For our transfer learning results, we uh, see that, that our models were pre-trained on ImageNet, which is diverse and very distinct from our synthetically developed GAN chart images set. We perform experiments with different hyperparameters and vary the number of transfer layers. We are able to achieve a 2% increase in accuracy compared to training the simple CNN model from scratch. During the evaluation of our pre-trained models, we achieved at least 96% accuracy when detecting CPU-related anomalies. All of the models can identify the normal runs without any anomalies with accuracy of at least 92. The misclassification errors are most common between normal runs and packet loss injected anomalies as seen in the confusion matrices. In contrast to our simple CNN train from scratch, the addition of horizontal flips and jitter does not degrade the performance of the pre-trained models. The data augmentation does not affect the accuracy of AlexNet, and, um, but it does improve the accuracy of VGG16. The pre-trained models are more robust and have a better understanding of data transformation due to their extensive prior knowledge. This work has been limited to one workflow, which does not allow for robust generalization. Based on our results, both training from scratch and transfer learning are promising methods that should be further tested on a larger and more diverse Gantt chart dataset. We are currently working on developing such a dataset. Thank you so much for uh, listening to our presentation.